all have this idea of where we want to be placed when we first apply to the JET program and start to picture the exact details of how our lives in Japan will be. As much as we hope to get one of our requested prefectures, things don't always work out the way we planned. My name is John Jarvis and I'm currently a third year ALT living in Akita Prefecture. Akita, Akita. When I first received the email with my placement, I was shocked to see I wasn't assigned to any of the prefectures I had requested. Coming from a small New Hampshire town in the US, I wanted to live in a place that could rival the gorgeous nature that I had grown up surrounded by. Not knowing a single thing about Akita, my heart was racing as I began my online search. Dogs, 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 really cute dogs. No, how about Akita, Japan? Dogs, dog festivals, more dogs, come on, give me something here. And there it finally was. I realized I had been placed in what is easily one of the best areas of Japan to see natural beauty. So my wife and I hopped on a plane heading for the small countryside city of Noshiro. The demographics here tend to skew older, with acres and acres of rice fields and farmland. Young people are inclined to move away to cities for college or to find work while the older population often remains in the peaceful countryside for their retirement or to work the farms. Not many tourists venture out to see northern Japan, which I think is a shame considering all it has to offer. There is only a small population of foreign residents here, making us somewhat of an enigma to the locals. Coupled with the language barrier, I wasn't sure before arriving that we would be able to make many friends here, if any. But I couldn't have been more wrong. We immediately hit it off with a small group of locals who were curious to interact with us. We used a mixture of broken Japanese and English and online translators to communicate. They adopted us into their group, and since then we've gone on more than a few road trips around the Tohoku region together. We've seen beautiful spring cherry blossoms, with petals falling off the trees in a flurry like falling snow filling up the moat of Hirosaki Castle. In early summer, the melting snow from the ice-capped mountains fills up Shusen Lake. When the dam releases this torrent of water, it overflows into the nearby forest. This creates the unforgettable sight of the sunken forest, a hidden gem of Akita that even many locals haven't seen or heard of before. Deep in the forests of Fujisato town, we saw dozens of hidden waterfalls, each of them like something straight out of a postcard. We visited more parks than I can even count, each one packed with beautiful fall foliage that attracts tourists from all over the country. Near the summit of Mount Hachimantai, there's a natural phenomenon called the Dragon Eye, a snow-filled pond with crystal clear water that looks like glass. Every morning, regardless of the season, I get to take in the beautiful view of the Shirakami Mountains on my commute to work. Whether it's biking along the Yonashiro River, walking to the grocery store, or even passing an abandoned place being reclaimed by nature, I know I'll never be disappointed by what I can find around the next corner. If I could go back in time to change my placement, I wouldn't. Because whether I end up somewhere I think I want, or Akita, or some other place altogether, Japan is a beautiful country where you never need to look very far to find the next view worth seeing. We may not have a choice in where we end up, but we do have a choice in how we spend our time here. I'm just lucky because I already feel right at home here in the New Hampshire of Japan, and I can't wait to see where we end up going next. <laughs>